Ethernet virtual circuit and bridge domain interfaces. Starting where we left off in the first video, we now need to configure the gigabit Ethernet interfaces to the backhaul network. EVC versus sub interface configuration. Historically, customers configured VLAN encapsulation and IP address information by using a sub interface construction. However, the ME3600-24CX and ASR903, like an increasing number of modern platforms, do not support the sub-interface approach. Instead, we now use the far more flexible Ethernet Virtual Circuit, or EVC configuration architecture for the Layer 2 services, and either the Bridge Domain Interface, or BDI, or Switch Virtual Interface, or SVI, for Layer 3 IP configuration. Interface and EVC configurations. We have already identified the interfaces which have been assigned for connection to the backhaul network. We assume that the defaults for negotiation, speed, and duplex are satisfactory at the default value of automatic negotiation. We next use the EVC command line interface, or CLI, to start the definition of the Ethernet service. Remember, the backhaul network requires the use of a VLAN tag of 100. As a result, we will define the encapsulation of the traffic which this interface will be programmed to receive, only that with a VLAN tag of 100. Additionally, we need to ensure that tags coming into the interface have the tag popped, and because we require that traffic exiting the interface has to have the same VLAN 100 tag pushed, we need to add the symmetric keyword. Then, we need to assign a bridge domain to this Ethernet service. The BDI will be the structure which we use to configure the IP characteristics. In this case, we use a BDI with the same number as the VLAN tag. This isn't necessary, but it is a convenient convention. This CLI instructs the machine to create either a BDI 100 or a VLAN 100 device, which we will configure in the next step. Finally, we should ensure the interface is taken out of shutdown. Now that the Layer 2 features have been configured, it is time to add the IP configuration. Bridge Domain and IP Configurations In this design, we will add the host name of each of the machines, red and blue. Then, we will define a loopback zero device on each machine and the IP address for each of them. Note that the network mask must be 255.255.255.255. Now, we need to configure the IP for the BDI or VLAN, which we created in the EVC step. The main requirement is to configure the IP address that will be the destination of the incoming traffic to the node. In this case, we have defined an address in the 10.10.0.0/24 subnet. This will allow red and blue to communicate with each other over the backhaul network. Finally, we ensure that the interface is not in shutdown state. Confirming basic connectivity. With these steps taken, we should now have connectivity over the backhaul network between the two nodes. Let's check our configuration. First, we will ensure that each of the interfaces, the loopback and the BDI or VLAN, are both configured correctly and are also in the correct state of up up. We should now be able to ping our local interfaces. First, we attempt to ping the address of the local loopback, then the address of the local BDI or VLAN. Finally, we ping the remote addresses. We ping the remote IP address, which should respond because both the local IP and the remote IP addresses are in the same broadcast domain and on the same subnet. Since IP routing is not yet running, the ping to the remote loopback address will likely fail.